All right, welcome back to the Ultimate Mixdown. I've had a number of folks on my other channel ask me how I achieve the audio quality in my videos, so I figured I'd do a quick and dirty record and mix audio tutorial. Now, if you're looking for more in-depth recording, mixing, mastering videos, then check out the other videos on this channel. This video is for people that don't have a lot of time but still want to capture those live performances that they can share with the world and also be able to have a decent audio quality in their videos. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now the first thing I want to talk about is equipment. It goes without saying that you need to have a computer that can handle the processing of any software that you run on it. And in this case, we're going to need to use video editing software and audio editing software or digital audio workstation. Now there are many digital audio workstations out there. Many of them are premium and industry standard while others are free. For free versions, there's Audacity, there's GarageBand on Mac, there's Cakewalk on Windows. So I implore you to try a bunch of different types of software and see what suits your needs. Now this software is gonna be great for capturing your audio into and then making post edits after. Now speaking of capturing audio input, the next thing you wanna think about is an audio interface. Now an audio interface is a separate piece of hardware that you would connect your microphone or your guitar into, and then you would plug that into your laptop, most likely via USB. Now the audio interface will take the sound coming into it from your microphone or your guitar, it'll boost that signal, it'll convert it from analog to digital so that you can capture it in your software. If you're using a microphone either for vocals or acoustic guitar or even miking up the amp of an electric guitar, there are a number of different types of microphones, but there are two in particular that I'll talk about today. The first one is a condenser microphone. Now a condenser microphone is a lot more sensitive, so it'll pick up a lot more frequencies and character coming from the audio source, but it'll also capture a lot of the noise in the room and possibly outside or elsewhere in the house. Now the other type of microphone is a dynamic microphone. And a dynamic microphone is a little less sensitive, so it won't be capturing all of those outside noises, depending on how loud the noise is, and it'll do a good job of capturing the source that's going directly into it. You can achieve good results with either type of microphone. So if you already have something lying around, I would say use what you have until you decide that you need something else. Now, speaking of microphones, you're gonna want a mic stand to hold your microphone. In addition, you're gonna want an XLR cable so that you can connect your microphone into your audio interface. If you're recording guitars or you're recording an acoustic electric like I do, you might want to plug in a quarter inch cable from the guitar into the audio interface as well so you can capture that direct input. I highly suggest recording the direct input of any guitars if you have the capability of doing so because if you don't like the audio that you captured in the microphone, you can do things in post-processing to help make it sound maybe a little bit better and blend it in with your original capture. Additionally, if you're going to be singing vocals, especially in a condenser microphone, you're going to want to use a pop filter. You'll also notice in the picture that there's a shock mount with the condenser microphone. This typically comes with the microphone, and it's really just a way of holding and stabilizing the microphone while you're recording. And then lastly, if you're recording into an audio interface or any type of software, you're going to want to use closed back headphones. So these are headphones that go all the way around the ear. You don't want any openings in those headphones because open back headphones will typically bleed the audio from the headphone and get picked up in the audio capture while you're trying to record. And the main thing we want to focus on while we're recording with a microphone is getting as dry of a signal as possible. In other words, we want to capture as much of the source as possible with as little of the outside noise as possible. All right, so you have all your equipment ready to go and set up. So you have your audio interface plugged into your computer. You have your microphone or your guitar cable or both plugged into your audio interface. And now you've pulled up your digital audio workstation and you're ready to record. And here I'm using Reaper, which has a free trial for 60 days. And then it's $60 on top of that to get the full license, at least as of when I purchased it. So Reaper is a great software. And if you really want to get up and running fast, check out my other video, Reaper Basics. So once you have your DAW open, everything's plugged in and turned on. You need to make sure that happens first. Then in your preferences, you want to make sure that it connects to your audio interface under the audio devices. Now all DAWs have preferences or they have something like hardware input, something like that. Your input device would be your audio interface. And for all of you, the output device would be the same thing. For me, I'm using this just because I'm recording the screen right now. So once you have your preferences set, then the first thing you want to do is add a couple tracks. So if you're recording just one track, like one guitar, or one vocal, you just add one track. Software has a way to add the tracks, usually through the menus. In Reaper, you can just double click in the track control panel and it creates the track. 
Now I have one track from my vocal mic and one track from my guitar direct input. So I'm going to click, double click again and I'll have two tracks. And then you want to name your tracks. So this will be vocals and this will be guitar. It goes without saying, if you're going to record more than one input, make sure the audio interface that you purchase has more than one input. What I have right now is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. And this has two inputs where you can either use two direct line inputs, like two guitars, or two microphones, or one of each. And then on top of that, if you're recording with a condenser microphone, you want to make sure that your audio interface has phantom power. So phantom power or the 48V knob or the 48V button is required to power those condenser microphones. So after we've set the names for our tracks, then we need to select the inputs. My vocals are going to be coming in on input two. So I have it plugged in directly in the interface on input two. So I'll select that input here. And then the guitars are plugged into input one, so I'll keep that here under input one. And now once I click the record button, you can start seeing the audio coming into the DAW. So I'll click record, I'll say a few words, and you'll see it here in the metering. Test, 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 one, two, three. Now the main thing you wanna focus on when recording vocals, guitar, or anything of an audio source into your audio interface, into your software, is that you wanna make sure that it doesn't peak anywhere beyond negative 12 dB. That allows for additional headroom so that if you want to add plugins on top or if you get extremely loud using that microphone or playing your guitar, you don't risk the possibility of clipping or clicking or some kind of sound that ruins the take. So what I like to do is I like to record arm the track, that's what this R is for, and sing the loudest part of the song or play the loudest part of the song on my guitar and just make sure it doesn't go above that negative 12. The thing you want to focus on is changing the knob on your audio interface itself. So on the hardware itself, you want to turn that dial or that slider up and down based off of what you're seeing here. So I'm going to record arm this track and I'm just going to talk into the microphone. But if you can imagine me singing at the loudest point of a song, I'm just going to gauge right here and make sure that my volume level is set properly. Test, 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 test. Now one other thing I want to talk about before we start recording the song are plugins. There's certain plugins that you would use in almost every scenario. I say almost every scenario because you really need to listen and see if you need that plugin to begin with. But oftentimes you're going to want to use an EQ and a compressor. And then I like to add some kind of effect like a delay or a reverb just to give a little bit of ambiance or some kind of way of gluing the tracks together. You don't want to use too much of an effect, but you do want to use something that'll help to blend these together nicely. So I've already created presets for my plugins, but let me show you those presets and then I can explain to you how you can add them onto your tracks regardless of the digital audio workstation that you're using. So I'll click my insert. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and do effects chains and load effects chain. And this is because I've already created the preset. So let me pull up my name vocals preset. And these are the plugins that I used when I recorded the cover for Goo Goo Dolls name. Every DAW either comes with a compressor, an EQ, a reverb, a delay, potentially a limiter, and if not, you can find free versions of these everywhere. Also, if you find something that looks good that's also a paid plugin, oftentimes you get a chance to try it for free, and then you can decide if you want to purchase it at a later time. So I'll go more into detail on these plugins once we start recording the song, but just to point out, I have a compressor, and I have an EQ, I have a little bit of reverb, a limiter so I can increase the volume of the tracks, with as much transparency as possible so that the volume is loud enough to compete with other things that you watch on YouTube. And then this is a metering to make sure that that limiter is working to the certain threshold that I need to set. So we'll talk more to this once we record the song. And then I also have plugin presets for guitar. So let's go into the guitar. Let's add effects chains, load effects chain. So I have my guitar chain. My guitar chain has a compressor, an EQ, and a reverb. So not too much going on. Again, the same type of ideas apply. Now, one thing I want to point out is you don't want to use too much of any of these plugins, especially reverb or delay while you're tracking or recording, because reverb and delay in particular will make the audio coming into your headphones seem a little bit more distant or a little bit more behind while you're trying to sing or play, and it could throw you off. So I usually like to set my reverb down a little bit while I'm recording, and then I'll boost it back up as necessary after the fact. And same with delay. So once you have your track set up, the inputs are selected. You're going to click the record arm button. Again, every DAW has this. It's a way of telling the software that once you click the record button, 
it's going to start recording on those individual tracks. So let's record on these tracks and press record and get right into it. And that's how simple it is to set up a couple tracks and record the song. I typically like to do a few takes until I get a take that I'm comfortable with. And then the next step in the process would be to mix the song. So making sure that all the elements can be heard, adding in some compression to tame the dynamics, adding some EQs to cut out some unpleasant frequencies and bring in more of the pleasant frequencies, and then adding other effects like reverb and delay to add a little bit more ambiance and also to help glue the tracks together. So be sure to stick around for the next video where we talk about the mixing process. We're going to go from your raw recorded tracks all the way to a nice polished mix that you'd be excited about to share with everybody. If you found this video useful, be sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. As always, thanks for joining the Ultimate Mixdown. I hope to see you in the next video.